Welcome to this Focus Deep Dive. If you're looking for the latest uh, really important updates on HIV, you're definitely in the right place. We're going to break down what's new and what it means. Exactly. We've been digging into the research from the big conference, CROI 2025, that's the conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infections. And some of the findings are, well, potentially revolutionary, aren't they? They really are. We're seeing stuff that could change how we think about HIV prevention, treatment, even cure research. So today, our mission is pretty straightforward. Cut through all the complex data and pull out the top five breakthroughs from CROI. We want to give you the essentials. Yeah, the key takeaways. And these cover a lot of ground from new prevention tools to exciting treatment news and even uh, steps towards longer term remission. OK, let's jump right in. First up, prevention. We all know pre-EP pre-exposure prophylaxis is a huge deal. Absolutely, a cornerstone of prevention. Well, Dr. Mupali Das presented findings on lenacapavir, but as a once yearly injection for pre-UP. Just think about that. Yeah. One shot, once a year. It's pretty remarkable. The current options, you know, daily pills or shots every couple of months, they work great, but this, this is different. How long did the protection last in the study? So they looked at two new formulations and the drug levels stayed high enough for protection for, get this, over 56 weeks. That's more than a year. And the study is still ongoing. Wow. What were the actual levels like, numbers-wise? Uh, right. So the lowest levels, the troughs, at week 52 were around 57 and 65 nanograms per milliliter for the two new ones. Even the subcutaneous version was over 23. And the peak levels? Much higher. They saw peaks up to 336 NGML. So strong levels throughout the year. That really signals consistent protection, doesn't it? It does. And think about adherence. Missing pills, forgetting appointments for shots. That can happen. A single shot a year. That could um, massively simplify things. One shot a year. That's it. It just sounds so much easier. Imagine the public health potential across the U.S. Huge potential. Now, they did report some side effects. Ah, uh, okay. What were they? Mainly mild to moderate pain right at the injection site. But apparently, it was generally tolerable for people in the study. Okay, manageable. So... For anyone considering PRP, this is definitely news to watch. Absolutely. It's worth discussing all the latest options with your doctor. And, you know, knowing your status is the first step. For listeners wanting to find testing options, there are resources like HIVRNATestGuide.com, which connects you to over 4,500 labs across the country. Good point. Knowing your status is key for prevention and treatment. So let's shift to treatment now. Breakthrough number two involves comparing treatments for people diagnosed with advanced HIV. Right. This was the LAP top trial led by Dr. Jorg Behrens. They compared Victigravir against Darunavir, specifically in folks who um, might have come to treatment a bit later, maybe with a lower CD4 count. And choosing that first treatment is so crucial in those cases, right? For getting the virus under control quickly and helping the immune system bounce back. Exactly. And the results, they strongly favored Victigravir. Well, it showed better viral suppression. More people reached undetectable levels. Plus, their CD4 cells recovered faster. Faster recovery? That's great news. Anything else? Yes, and this is really important for the long haul. Bictograver had a higher barrier to resistance. Meaning the virus is less likely to mutate and stop the drug from working. Precisely. So for someone starting treatment later, maybe with more complex health needs, having that robust, durable option right from the start is, well, it's a big advantage. So the takeaway here is, particularly if someone is diagnosed later, Victor Graver might be a more effective and uh, sustainable choice to start with. The data certainly points that way. It gives doctors really valuable information for making those critical first-line treatment decisions, especially since late diagnoses still happen, even here in the U.S. Okay, moving from optimizing current treatment to something even more ambitious. Let's talk about functional cures. Breakthrough number three, IMC M113V. Yeah, this is exciting stuff, though definitely still early days. A functional cure, just to clarify, isn't about completely eradicating the virus, but controlling it without needing daily meds. The ultimate goal for many. So what is IMC M113V? It's a type of drug called a T-cell receptor bispecific therapy. It's developed by Immunocore. Think of it as uh, like a matchmaker. A matchmaker, how? It's designed to grab onto an HIV infected cell with one arm and grab onto one of your immune system's killer T cells with the other arm. It physically brings them together so the T cell can destroy the infected cell. So it actively hunts down the infected cells where HIV hides out. That's the idea. 
targeting the reservoir, which is the big challenge in cure research. And the initial trial results in 16 people who were already suppressed on RT were pretty interesting. What did they find? Three of the participants had a significant delay in their virus rebounding after they stopped their regular HIV meds. A delay in rebound, that's a positive yeah. sign, right? It's a very encouraging sign. And they also saw decreases in markers of that HIV reservoir we talked about. Seeing a therapy, even at this stage, show potential to control HIV off meds. That's, uh, that's a bit of a wow moment. Definitely a wow moment. Any downsides noted in the trial? There was some mild cytokine release syndrome at the higher doses, basically signs the immune system is getting activated, but it was reported as generally manageable. So while it's early, this kind of research really opens up possibilities beyond daily pills down the line. It really does. It highlights the pace of innovation. For anyone living with HIV, it's worth keeping an eye on these developments and maybe discussing research trials with their provider. Okay, breakthrough number four. This one takes us to South Africa and focuses on women who haven't always been fully represented in cure research. That's right, the FARS study led by Dr. Thumbi Ndungu. It's so important to ensure research includes everyone. This study looked at a combination therapy in 20 women who were diagnosed very early during acute HIV infection and were on RT. What was the combination? It involved two broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs. Those are powerful antibodies that work against many HIV strains. VRC07523LS and KP256V2LS. And they added something called Vesitolimod, or VES, which is a TLR7 agonist meant to wake up the immune system. Okay, BNABs plus an immune booster. What was the goal? to see if this combo could induce remission, allowing the women to safely stop their daily RT for a while. And did it work? The results are pretty remarkable. Six women stayed off RT for 48 weeks. Wow, nearly a year. Yeah, and four of those six actually went even longer, 55 weeks, still showing at least partial control of the virus without daily pills. That's incredible. What does this tell us? Well, first, like you said, it underscores why we must include women in cure research. Oh. Second, it suggests this kind of combination could be a pathway towards managing HIV without daily therapy, at least for periods. It might change how we think about treatment interruptions. And globally, thinking beyond the U.S. The implications are huge. A therapy that doesn't need daily pills could be absolutely life-altering in places where access to daily medication is a challenge. It offers hope for more sustainable strategies worldwide. A really important piece of research. Right. Okay, fifth and final breakthrough. This one tackles some of the uh, sort of hidden damage HIV can cause even when viral load is undetectable. Right. Even with successful art, there's this thing called soluble GP120 or SGP120. It's a protein the virus sheds. And it hangs around even when the virus itself is suppressed. Exactly. And this floating SGP120 isn't harmless. It can interact with immune cells, contribute to chronic inflammation, maybe slow down CD4 recovery, and potentially increase risks for things like heart problems. It's like the virus leaves this toxic footprint. So how do we clean up the footprint? That's where the restart study comes in. They looked at a drug called Fostum Savior. Its job is specifically to block that harmful interaction between SGP120 and the CD4 cells. Ah, so it intercepts that specific damaging protein. Precisely. And the potential benefit here isn't just about the virus itself, but about improving overall immune health and maybe reducing those long-term risks like cardiovascular issues, even in people who've been undetectable for years. So for someone living with HIV long-term, maybe someone on RT whose CD4 count hasn't recovered as much as they hoped. This research could be really relevant. It suggests there might be ways to address these lingering effects. It's definitely something worth discussing with a doctor looking at immune function labs and considering if something like Fostum Saver might play a role in optimizing long-term health. Fascinating. So it's looking beyond just viral load to overall immune recovery. Exactly. A more holistic view of long-term health with HIV. Okay, so wrapping up our deep dive into CROI 2025. The overall feeling seems really positive, doesn't it? A lot of momentum. Definitely. There's a clear shift happening. It's not just about managing HIV anymore. It's about actively finding ways to prevent it better, treat it more effectively, maybe even achieve remission or a functional cure. From once yearly pre-P to better first-line treatments to targeting the reservoir to helping long-term survivors, it covers so much ground. It really does. The science is moving fast. So a final thought for our listeners. As you heard about these five breakthroughs, which one stood out most to you? Which one makes you think, wow, that could really change things or maybe raises new questions for you? Yeah, it's worth reflecting on. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep talking with your healthcare providers.
And don't forget, for reliable information and finding testing options at thousands of labs nationwide, you can visit HIVRNATestGuide.com. Knowledge really is power in this field. Knowing your status, staying informed, it all makes a difference. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll catch you next time with more updates.